Look at our solar system from an alien visitor's perspective. What would surprise you? What would make you look twice? The unlikely answer? Our oversized moon. If you look at our moon and compare it to all of the other moons in our solar system, it's actually quite odd. It's huge, way bigger than any other moon in the solar system compared to its planet. It's a giant moon. It's almost like we're a binary planet, two objects orbiting around each other to some degree. Our planet-sized moon is unique in the solar system. And this battle-scarred giant serves as our guardian angel. Its vast gravity raises the tides that breathe life into the Earth's oceans. The moon stabilizes the tilt of our planet, regulating the climate and seasons. Without the moon, humans may never have evolved. We owe everything to our moon, yet its formation is one of the greatest unsolved mysteries in planetary science. There are many ideas for the origin of our supersized moon, but they all start the same way. With the formation of the inner solar system 4.6 billion years ago. When the solar system first formed, it would have looked very different from the way it looks now. Instead of having a few planets and mostly empty space surrounding the sun, you would have had a, a disk. And this disk would have been thick. It would have been composed of gas and dust and rocky bodies. The infant sun sparks into life, blowing away the clouds of gas that are closest to it. The rocky fragments that are left behind clump together over time to form planets like Earth. But there are many more of these planets than we see today. Giant rocks jostle for position, crossing paths as they struggle to find stable orbits. Is it possible that one of these planets was destined to become our moon? There have been a lot of ideas about where our oversized moon came from. One idea was just that it was wandering around in our solar system and we captured it. According to the capture theory, a wayward planet passes a little too close to the early Earth and our planet's immense gravity captures hold of it. The planet settles into orbit around the Earth, and it becomes the moon we see today. This theory seemed to check all the boxes. But scientists needed proof it was right. If it was really true that the moon was a captured planet, you would expect that its constituents would be different than the Earth. It was something that formed in a different place in the Earth and then got captured. So you would expect them to be made of different stuff. To prove the theory, scientists needed to compare the moon's earliest rocks with similar examples found on Earth. The best rock for comparison is a mineral that could have only been formed when the newly born moon was still molten. On Earth, this type of rock is formed in highly volcanic places like Iceland. This is what we want. You see this on Orthosite, how how white it is. Anorthosite forms in a different way than normal basalt. Um, you can almost think of it uh, like the white foam on the head of a dark beer, sort of floating up to the top. So in a, in a magma environment, this would form and then just float up to the top of a, of a magma sea. Getting a sample of anorthosite from the moon is important because darker rocks could have had their chemistry altered by asteroid impacts. We really had to have a piece of, of this anorthosite rock because we just couldn't learn about the origin of the moon from the dark materials. We had to have you know, that genesis rock to tell us about the origin of the moon. In the 1970s, Apollo astronauts collected samples and brought them back to Earth for comparison. The results shocked the scientific world. 
What they found was that the composition of the moon was almost exactly the same as the composition of the crust of the Earth. So this idea that the moon was a captured planet from elsewhere in the solar system was out. There was no way that was true. The rocks looked very Earth-like in many respects, and that was a puzzle. With the captured planet theory blown out of the water, planetary scientists took action. Scientists said, look, we've got to get together and figure this out. And they went to a conference together in Kona, Hawaii, all the top scientists in planetary science, and they, they hammered out all of the leading ideas. A lot of people think scientists don't have an imagination. We're just robots looking at things and analyzing, and it's not like that. If you want to figure out how something like the moon came to be, you have to have a wild imagination and try all these crazy ideas. But they have to be constrained by reality. They locked themselves into a room together and emerged from that meeting and said, yes, this can work. The new theory focused on the water contents of the moon rocks. They were surprisingly dry. Something must have heated up the moon to unimaginable temperatures, and we were led to think that it must be some sort of collision. The new theory was built around the idea of a catastrophic collision 4.5 billion years ago. But it wasn't an impact into the moon. It was an impact into the Earth. There was a crazy idea that the Earth formed, and while it was still young, another planet-sized object, something about the size of Mars, came in and hit the Earth, blew off a huge amount of material, which then coalesced and formed the moon. This is a pretty cool idea. It was groundbreaking, I guess, literally. Scientists named the Mars-sized planet Thea, and they modeled how the impact would have played out. 4.5 billion years ago, Thea catches the Earth with a glancing blow. The impact throws molten debris far into space forming a ring of burning rock around the Earth. If we could travel back in time and, and somehow stand on the surface of the Earth when the moon was forming, it would have been amazing. A bright ring of fire was stretching across the sky. And here in the sky would have been a bright ball of magma glowing, with all kinds of shrapnel and small rocks being attracted to that point because of the immense gravity. This was the proto-moon the thing that would eventually become the moon we have in our sky today. Our moon forms in under a year. Its crust is almost chemically identical to the Earth's because they share a common origin. This impact idea, as weird as it sounds, actually does the best job explaining everything that we see about the moon. The impact hypothesis becomes the leading theory for the origin of our oversized moon. 